tonight. I think anybody who can make us aware of God, what he has done, has added to us. Um, the first exhortation I want to give you is to consider how a man moved by the Holy Spirit talks to the people of God and represents the people of God. That is a very important thing. When you think about watching your doctrine closely, this is something that is very much a part of that. How are you talking to the people of God? How are you addressing them? Um, this is something that for me has, has become more lively in recent days and I know I've talked about it a lot because I'm, I'm seeing it in like everything. Everything I'm reading and considering and meditating is the confirmation of the gospel. God has said what he would do and what it would produce. It's right for you to make a strong appeal to what God has done in the people of God. It's right to do that, brethren. To let that be your default until people have given you evidence that they're not walking in that. And then, of course, you don't, you don't keep doing these kind of things. You address the difficulty. You don't ignore difficulty, things that are distracting people. But... When we speak, we are using some kind of motive to move people to action. Prepare your minds for action, see? You are going to supply some kind of motive when you teach and preach. But here is, brethren, a very strong motive is to appeal to the work of God in the people of God as a means of moving them to action. This is something that's over and over found in the scriptures. Give you some quick examples. The Apostle Paul mentions a number of sins uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, but at the end of this list of iniquities and works of the flesh, he says, and such were some of you. But, I'm thankful for that but. That's like the line of demarcation between us being on our own and God working in us. That's the line of demarcation between no change and change. It's the line of demarcation between walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit. It's the line of demarcation between unreconciliation and being reconciled to God. And God's work is the pivotal point upon that, where things change, what God has done. See, and he says, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. That kind of word, brethren, can help somebody. Maybe somebody has slipped off into the mud. That kind of work can help them get out of it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. God has done that. That makes a strong appeal to faith. Men will not be able to do what God has called them to do unless they are moved by faith to do it. See? And so these strong appeals to the work of God, we are moving men to take action by faith. If they take action by some other means, it won't be received by God anyway. So, so, the, so we've got to be aware of this. We want to move the people of God by faith. Here's another one. Dearly beloved, I like that. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts that war against, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Think of how much he has just made us aware of in that. See? He doesn't just say, don't give yourself to fleshly lusts. There's some men that think that's enough. You have got to have a strong reason to serve God. It's not enough just to tell the people what to do. You tell them what to do in the context of reasoning. This is part of walking in the light. We're, being, we're made aware of what God has done in salvation. God's made you a stranger. You're not of the world anymore. So don't give your love to the world. Amen. Amen. God's prepared another place for you. See, all these things are part of our strangership. Your citizenship is in another world. It's in another place. So don't give yourselves to this world. See, that makes a strong, strong appeal to the faith of God's people. Because that is what they really are. If they have been saved, they really are aliens and strangers. See, we're not just, this isn't fairy tale talk, okay? This is what they really are if they've been saved. One more. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. You know, I found, I found in my own self as I've been able to kind of recognize some of these real hot-button issues that people have, like election and some other things. 
that it seems like, like an enemy has done this kind of thing. Okay? There are other things. Baptism is one. Um, there are other things. Predestination is one. God has given us these things because these are, these, are, these are wonderful resources for us to have. I can see how the devil would provoke a lot of argument to try and distract from these marvelous realities. But the truth of the matter is God has used this wonderful word, and it is a strong appeal to the people of God. Put on as the elect of God. God has chosen you. Put on as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Notice how he stacks this. He likes stacking part of God's works upon another. Here's another thing he's done. Here's another thing he's done. He's made you holy. Here's another thing he's done. He's poured his love into your heart. Here's another thing he's done. See, he's just kind of stacking this. I, I, I love that. Put on bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against another, of course, as God has himself forgiven you for Christ's sake, see? A man who knows he's chosen, a man who knows he's beloved, a man who knows he's holy will act in a humble way and will be productively charitable to the people of God. Yes. It's when that gets lost, that's when, that's, that's when trouble takes place. So, brethren, I, I just want to encourage you in that way to let's do that. Let's be very careful how we're addressing the people of God and how we're representing the people of God, okay? They are not the same as they were. They are a different people. Another thing, <clears throat> when we come together, let us be encouraged to apprise one another of the resources of God. That's what he's done. He's told us we have armor, okay? And that's what we want to do. Let's apprise one another of what God has provided. You might find sometimes, you'll kind of sense sometimes, the way that some of the people of God are talking, that somehow they're not aware of this marvelous resource. And you can be the one to kind of supply that. Say, so, well, but God will keep you from falling. But God will keep you from falling. And he'll present you faultless for the presence of his glory. The promises of God are an excellent way of, of, of apprising the people of God of what he's given them, of what he's supplied. Or you could say, you know, things like, well, there's an abundance of grace. God has provided grace. There are a great many resources that God has provided, but we want to apprise one another of those resources, okay? Um, and I want to encourage you with this one thing, too. Endure hardness as good soldiers. If we need armor, it's because we're in a battle. We're in a fight, okay? Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised by trouble. We're not surprised by illness. I mean, those are things that people face in the world naturally, you know, and so we're not surprised by that. We're not going to make too much of those kind of things. That's part of what enduring harness as a good soldier is, you know. Uh, there's a natural tendency when the body has affliction is for you to be focused on that affliction, isn't there? There's a kind of a natural tendency to that. Or think of it this way. I've seen people do this quite a bit. They're, they're walking across the sidewalk, and then they, they hit a point where they stumble. And what's the first thing they do? They look back at where they stumble. And so they're focused on where they stumble. See, it's just kind of a natural tendency to do that kind of thing. And when you have to endure hardness, there's a natural tendency to be focused on that unresolved difficulty and problem, pain, whatever it is. We're not surprised that we're facing trouble. We're not surprised that, er we're not surprised that, that bullets are whizzing by us. We're not surprised at that. Uh, we have armor for a reason, so let's be encouraged about that, not to be unsympathetic to our difficulties, but not to blow them up and to make them a point of focus. We have been told in the scriptures very clearly that we must, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom of God. This is a fight. You do have to fight. We have to fight in order to make it to the end, and we shall, by the grace of God, and so I just want to encourage you to consider these things. And I thank you, Brother Aaron, for your, for your message. It was very, very profitable for us. Okay. We go ahead and open now for any comments that you may have.